What is up, you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am MLB Cheddarbox, aka Christian Corey is the name. You see the title and the thumbnail in today's video, whenever today is. I'm not 100% sure when I will be uploading this video. Could be sooner rather than later. Um, but I'm going to be ranking my top 10 baseball movies. Yes, my top 10 favorite baseball movies. And let's get started. All right, number 10 on my list is Major League, the first one. Two's okay, three was terrible, but Major League One is hilarious. It, it is hilarious. And the guy who makes it the best is Bob Euchre. Bob Euchre, the Brewers broadcaster, Hall of Fame broadcaster, he is hilarious. God, is he funny. He is a genuinely funny man. He is... He makes that movie. He honestly does. He plays a broadcaster, but he he, he makes all these like, um, like, s just like really smart Alec remarks, and throughout the whole movie, he like disses every player. It's hilarious. I mean, the you know the whole uh, you know the voodoo doll and and um, everything. Charlie Sheen's in it, which he's funny as always. Made in 1989, just. Just, just a great movie, a funny movie. It's really a funny movie. It's a comedy, and they made three of them. I mean, like, usually the first one's the best. Even Bob Euchre said number three was terrible. But the first one's hilarious. The first one's great. Love uh, Major League One. Bob Euchre is the best. Charlie Sheen is great in it as well. He plays a main character, the pitcher, um, who's like a wild thing, and he has a crazy haircut, and he goes nuts to play for the Indians. It's hilarious. And Bob Euchre, a small part in the movie, being the broadcaster, but without him, it wouldn't even be on the list, honestly. Bob Euchre makes this movie. Yeah. All right, number nine is The Natural, um, with Robert Redford, made in 1984. It's in color, so it's a good thing. But the thing is, is that in the movie, he plays for a team called the Knights, which is fictional, 100%. Fictional team, great story, but I just wish they could have came up with, like, maybe the Giants, um... The Yankees, the Dodgers, like they could have just used one of those teams' names, honestly. Maybe they had problems doing that, but something. I, I just wish it wasn't a fictional team he played for. I wish it was a real team, but that's only my really thing with it. It's a good movie. The problem is, I've never seen this movie from start to beginning. I always catch it in the middle on MLB Network, again, on like Sunday nights. This is, this is what I'm talking about. I, I really don't watch this from start to finish. Hits the light tower, hits the clock in one of the movies, big home runs, you know, he gets shot in the movie, um, you know, he's bleeding, you know, it's like it's like Kurt Schilling in real life. It's a good movie, I just didn't like the fact that it wasn't based off a real team or they couldn't use a real team name. That's the only thing I had with it. It's a good movie. And why I gave it number nine, I really haven't seen it start to finish that much. I always catch it in the middle and I never get a feel for the movie. So that's why I got it number nine. Alrighty, guys, number eight on my list is The Sandlot. Now, this honestly, I put it higher than what I could have. I mean, this is number eight. I put this because of you guys. Everybody and their brother loved The Sandlot. I get it. Sandlot's a good movie. It's a good movie. The beginning is good. The beginning is great of the movie. But then once they hit the ball over the fence, you know, signed by Babe Ruth, and they try to get it back, it, it just goes downhill for me. It, the whole point is getting the ball back. And I like baseball movies, particularly with kids, um, like who actually play baseball. And they played, you know, they're supposed to play baseball. It's, you know, main character Mike Victar, you know, he plays uh, Benny the Jet Rodriguez. It was released in 1993. It's a good movie. It's a classic. But I just wish they would have played more baseball and then, like, left out the whole getting the ball back part. It was just too complex for me. It just lost me when they were getting the ball back because I know that they're just kids and they don't really know like, oh, I just knock on the door. I get that. But I just wish the movie was more about kids actually playing the game for fun than just getting a ball back signed by Babe Ruth that they, that they hit over the fence. And I just, that's my only pet peeve with the whole Sandlot series. They focus too much on getting the ball back, the second one, the spaceship back. Um, so I just, that's what, why I have a problem with the Sandlot. That's honestly why. Alrighty, guys. Number seven on the list is Cobb, um, with Tommy Lee Jones and Robert Wool, 
produced in 1994. Now, Cobb, as you probably can already tell, is based off of Ty Cobb, uh, the man Ty Cobb. And this movie is basically, it has to be based in the 40s, maybe 50s, depending on how long Cobb lived. It's about this writer who interviews Ty Cobb. They're talking about, you know, best baseball players, Babe Ruth, you know, Walter Johnson, and Ty Cobb's name comes up in the conversation. And they're like, Cobb, Ty Cobb, yes, he's a jerk, yeah. And they all like to realize this guy's a jerk, and this young writer wants to go, I'm going to interview Ty Cobb. And that's the whole point of the movie, is that this writer ends up going to, I believe, Reno, somewhere in Nevada, to go interview Ty Cobb. And he goes interviews Ty Cobb, played by Tommy Lee Jones. And honestly, Ty Cobb is is is... It's a good, it's a funny movie. It's not what I expected. It has nothing to do with baseball. Sometimes the trailers are really, you know, misleading when you look at the trailer and you watch the movie because I thought it was actually going to be like Ty Cobb's life playing baseball. But no, it was like the, when he's like 90 years old getting interviewed by this writer who ends up writing a story about him, finds out Ty Cobb's a jerk, and he ends up writing two different stories. The one Ty Cobb wants him to write, and then his own version of how he perceives Cobb as a man. And Cobb's like a jerk. He's nuts, you know. And there's this one scene in the movie which, I, again, when I first watched this, I was probably like 10, I think. And, and, and my parents didn't know that this movie was a little risque. I mean, looking at it now that I'm older, it's not that bad. But back then, it was like, whoa. So we had, and there's a scene in the movie where he... Um, meets up with a with a stripper and he tries to have a night with a stripper and it's just very like 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 almost pg it is pg-13 i actually do think he's right at pg-13 it's funny as hell but it's just the one movie the one scene where he like has a one night stand with the stripper and it's just funny it's just that one weird scene in the movie that you didn't expect out of this particular movie um the way they advertised it but it's a funny movie if you're young, do not watch it without your parents. That'd be my suggestion. Make sure your parents are cool with you watching this movie. Um, because there are some scenes in it that could be a little risque, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, but funny movie. Alrighty, guys. Number six on the list is The Bad News Bears. The original Bad News Bears. The Bad News Bears and The Sandlot had a lot of... There's a lot of sequels to Bad News Bears and The Sandlot. But The Bad News Bears is hilarious. The original Bad News Bears with Walter Matthau, produced in 1976. If you don't know who Walter Matthau is, look up um, Odd Couple, the original Odd Couple. You'll know who he is. He's hilarious. He plays, you know, the, the kid's coach, and he's like a drunk, and he cleans pools, which for me it's hilarious because cleaning pools is the most random job I thought the writers could think of in that movie. They're like, hmm, he's a drunk. He's like, he's, he's a drunk, he's a nobody, he's a loser. What job could we give him? Hmm. Ah, cleaning pools. Great! Like, it's just such a random job. Great, great movie. The kids are hilarious. Swearing it all. It's funny. A little PG-13 if you haven't watched it. I mean, for some, if you're okay with swearing. Not like Cobb where it's sexual. But this one's hilarious. Bad. Honestly, hilarious movie. Go check it out if you've not seen it. The original one. Bad News Bears, Walter Matthau, produced in 1976. Alrighty, guys, number five on the list is Fear Strikes Out. Now, a lot of you guys might be saying, what? What, what, what is this movie? Fear Strikes Out, really underrated movie. I put it at five because I wasn't going to put it four, three, or two, or one, but I put it five right in the middle because it's a really good movie. Now, I might have some recency bias because I just watched this movie a couple weeks ago and I'm doing a report about it for college. Um... And Fear Strikes Out is Jimmy Pearsall story. Jimmy Pearsall, if you do not know who he is, he was a very highly uh, touted prospect in the early 50s for the Red Sox who ended up suffering eventually and being diagnosed with bipolar disorder or, or what they called it back then, manic depressive disorder. Um, so he actually suffered from bipolar disorder, manic depressive disorder, whatever you like to call it, um, in real life. And Jimmy Pearsall, who the story is based off of, was played by Anthony Perkins and uh, co-starring Carl Malden, who's his father, 
He plays his father, who puts tremendous pressure on Jimmy throughout his life to succeed in baseball. You know, the reason why he, he ends up being diagnosed eventually at the end of the movie with bipolar disorder, because of the pressure his, uh, his father puts on him to succeed in baseball. The movie it really dives into the psyche of, of a professional athlete and, and how, honestly, this story really solidifies the idea that, you know, baseball is 90% mental and, you know, 10% physical, AKA, you know, the great Yogi Berra saying. And even people back then when mental disorder was not widely talked about or addressed or even really known to a certain degree to most people, that it still existed and people who had jobs such as professional athletes who think that's, you know, the best job in the world still do suffer with mental issues and can suffer with mental issues and did even back then in such a time as you know the early 50s when a lot of things weren't known back then when it came to mental illness so it's a really great movie i would highly suggest you um look you know watch it it's a really good movie it's in black and white disclaimer for some of you guys who can't handle black and white movies but it's a good movie anthony perkins plays a great jimmy pearsall jimmy pearsall himself actually helped produce some of the movie that's a little tidbit for you. I did a lot of research on this movie, but is it based off a true story? And it's actually Jimmy Pearsall played for quite a while for a couple different teams. Um, he had a pretty substantial career, played with the Red Sox, the Angels, and a couple other teams I can't remember off the top of my head. But he had a substantial career, pretty nice career, actually. And uh, I would highly suggest you guys checking out this movie. Alrighty, guys. Number four on the list is 61 uh, with Barry Pepper playing Roger Maris, and Thomas Jane playing Mickey Mantle. It was produced in 2001. It's a Billy Crystal film. Um, Billy Crystal, the comedian and the great, you know, avid Yankees fan. Obviously, 61 was, you know, the, you know, the home run race in 1961 uh, between Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle to break Babe Ruth's 60 home run record, uh, you know, single season home run record, and Roger Maris ended up you know, accomplishing that feat. And it really, again, psychic of the player. Went through, you know, their, their kind of, um, their mental struggles, Roger Maris's mental struggles, the stressors of Mickey Mantle getting older and the knee injuries and, and Roger Maris coming up and being kind of the new guy in a sense and, and, you know, really having to deal with all the media and everything. It's not, it didn't go as deep into the psyche of the player as Fear Strikes Out did. It's obvious that it's in CGI, like high, a very high use of CGI in this movie. That's the only bad thing about it. Like when you look at the stadium, obvious CGI. Um, but other than that, other than the CGI, it's, it's good. It's a good movie. It's a good acting, good story, underrated movie, I think. Um, but it's a really good movie produced in 2001. So yeah, 61, go check it out. Number three on the list, unlike 61, this movie did not use any CGI. This used real locations, a real baseball stadium, Moneyball, Brad Pitt, and Jonah Hill, Brad Pitt playing Billy Bean, the A's general manager, and Jonah Hill, Billy Bean's statistical and analytical sidekick. Um, he plays Peter Brand. Um, that's his you know, name in the movie, Peter Brand. And it's a good movie. Brad Pitt is awesome in the movie. He plays a great Billy Bean, really believable, a great GM. So does Jonah Hill. Plays a great like sidekick, aka assistant GM. They use the actual stadium, the Oakland Coliseum. They film it in Oakland for the most part. They're you know they're they're in Oakland. They use the stadium, although it's not the prettiest stadium. It's still like nice to see like an actual stadium that's not CGI, unlike '61 was. I mean they couldn't you know film it at Yankee Stadium, obviously. But in Moneyball, they were able to film it at, um, you know, O.O Coliseum. Really good touch to it. Makes the movie realistic. Makes the movie believable. Players were good in it. Acting was good. Art Howell was great. You know, the guy who played Art Howell. Um, really good movie. Highly, highly suggest this movie. If you have not watched it, please watch it. It's a good movie. Uh, I love it. By the way, just quick note. Moneyball was produced in 2011. Just Number two on the list is Field of Dreams. Kevin Coster, James Earl Jones, 1989. Have you seen this movie? You should. Um, it's about this Iowa farmer who loves baseball. You know, 
and then he has this epiphany or this, you know, he hears voices in, in the field, in the cornfield. And it's like, you know, God speaking to him. And it's like, you know, if you build it, he will come. And he ends up building the baseball field. And, you know, then the legends come out of the, out of the corn. And, you know, there's 1919 Chicago White Sox, the Black Sox. And at the end of the movie, his father and, his, and him play catch at the end of the movie. It's a very, you know, very great movie. It's a really good movie. The, the sound effects... The, the the visual appearance of the movie is great. The baseball feels beautiful. Beautiful baseball field. I want to go there. If any of you guys have gone to the Field of Dreams location, comment down below your thoughts of that experience. I'm sure it was wonderful. Alrighty, guys. Number one movie on my list, my number one baseball movie is Pride of the Yankees. Pride of the Yankees is the best baseball movie. It's in black and white, but I don't care if it's in black and white. Best baseball movie ever, Pride of the Yankees. If you don't know what it's about, it's basically about the Lou Gehrig story. Lou Gehrig is played by Gary Cooper in the movie, and his wife, uh, Mrs. Gehrig, Teresa Wright is the wife, um, Lou Gehrig's wife. And also, Babe Ruth is in the movie as well, played by Babe Ruth, yes. This is the one film he's in. I think like well, the only film that Babe Ruth is actually in is this film right here, um, Pride of the Yankees. Babe Ruth, the actual real Babe Ruth, is in this movie playing himself. But Gary Cooper is great as Lou Gehrig. Um, it was produced in 1942, almost a year after Lou Gehrig died from uh, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, whatever you want to call it. It's honestly a great movie, and I would highly, highly suggest you watching this movie has one of my favorite quotes of all time. This is actually why I got this picture here of Lou Gehrig. Actually, this is actually Gary Cooper playing Lou Gehrig because this is the picture that used in the film. It's actually not the actual Lou Gehrig, but it's Gary Cooper who played Lou Gehrig, which I think he played a great Lou Gehrig. Looked, looked exactly like him. Um, great acting in the movie as well, obviously. But, you know, his quote, if you can see it, I'll probably show a picture up here. I'll just show a picture to you guys. Yet today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. But I love what he says after. After that quote. He says, I might have given a bad break, but I have an awful lot to live for. So this quote, I love this quote. I live by this quote. But that quote is actually the last like sentence and words he uttered in front of a national and nationwide audience. So that is pretty cool. I, I love this movie. This movie, I would highly suggest you guys watch this movie. So it's a good movie. It's a good movie. It's a great movie. I love the movie. And uh, yeah, Pride of the Yankees is my number one baseball movie. Uh, there's my top 10, guys. There's my top 10 best baseball movies. Comment down below your thoughts of my list. Comment down below uh, if you agree or disagree with my list. And comment down below your number one baseball movie in your mind i'd love to hear what you think of some of these baseball movies i've mentioned and what's your favorite movie um, when it comes to the sport of baseball all righty guys like comment subscribe and i'll catch you later